Shout out to EA for sponsoring this video. Having decent game sense is vital to improving at Apex, but so is understanding all of the different legend ability usage, whether that be the legend you're playing, the legends your teammates are using, or even what legends you're going up against. So in this video, I'll break down several different fights and go in depth on how I was able to outplay my opponents, not only using abilities, but also my game sense. So let's get into it. Now in this first clip on Caustic, we are pushing Stormcatcher, trying to third party. I'm duo queuing with my friend Speeds. You'll see I get scanned here, so I talk my caustic ult. It's not the best ult, but it is good at denying some area. Once we get the bloodhound cracked over here, Speeds is able to take care of it. And then there's the Watson. Once again, we team fired both of these players, resulting in them dying very quickly. Now we can see that their third teammate's behind the door. It's a wraith. She's trying to set a portal. I go for the thirst on the Watson so she can't take it. And so I can get an armor swap. And then I start getting shot at from the roof. This is the other team that we didn't know about. So you see how I double backed here going into the portal. Super risky move because I'd stay in line of sight of the guy on height, but also also, I'd still be in line of sight if I tried to jump off Stormcatcher. So I was faced with two decisions that I felt like were both pretty bad, but I elected to go for the portal because my friend had already taken it, saying it's clear. And also being on Caustic, I feel like I can trap the portal if they want to chase me. This is a huge advantage as Caustic, so I try to utilize it. Once I take it and go low ground here, Speeds goes high ground and he runs into this full team. He gets knocked. I pop this Phoenix kit and I kind of wait to see what are these guys going to do? You can see that I put a trap on the portal and this is going to let me know how many enemies take it and when they do. And you'll see right here, I've got two of them. I get this Valkyrie pretty low. She's slowed. She's stunned. I'm trying to capitalize off of that. While that's going on, Newcastle tried to push me. I get some good sprays here on him. And then there's only one left. Now at this time, our teammate is pushing up. He's just arriving to the fight. So I'm hoping he can do something, you know, take some attention here. But I can hear that fuse is going for the res. So I'm trapped in this mother load. I throw a couple of traps out so that I can just, I don't know, create something here if I need to off the scan. I see that they res, but Newcastle elected to run pretty far. I catch him, and then I'm rolling off momentum here. Fuse must have taken damage from either my teammate or his own ult. I'm not sure, but it results in a nice 1v3. Now, one thing I want to highlight here is as soon as these players came through the portal, I knew two of them did, so I never got a tick on the third, so I don't know if he took a different route. As soon as I downed the Valkyrie, though, I immediately looked to a different area because I know the second player had already taken my gas damage. He's not that close. I got a faint audio cue that the third player was pro and that's very common here. While all the attention's on me, I down one of theirs. And here is the Newcastle looking for me. Luckily, I get a huge spray on him and I know I have to push him. Now, this push was pretty risky. You know, I jump over the car. I'd be theoretically in line of sight of the fuse, but I felt like it was worth it because I figured I could quickly get back to my cover. And at this point, it's much easier to deal with this fight if I take out one of the support legends that has a special revive. Now, in this next clip, we're moving on to this fight that just finished up on the edge of zone. I've got my Caustical in hand ready to go with it. Just in case I see someone, I throw it at the Bangalore. Now look, Bangalore goes in here. I know that the zone's cutting off that building, so I trap it. Once I trap it, I basically force her to be stuck in there for at least a few extra seconds. Speeds is 1v1ing this player on the roof while I 1v1 the Newcastle. Now Newcastle kind of jumps me, surprised me, got the first shot, but I'm able to take care of him. I throw a trap down. I was gonna bat, but then I just go for the armor swap and you can see right there briefly, Bangalore ran out, rushed it, and Speeds took care of her. I feel like this was a good use case of having the ult out, denying the area, forcing her into a building, trapping the door, which stalls her and just takes her out of the fight, and then using our gunplay and our teamwork to just 1v1 each of those players. I really looked at the zone and assessed what spots were in and what spots weren't in, and I used that really to my advantage here when it came to denying area, which Caustic is excellent at. Now in this last fight, we have a 3v3, but we're getting held out of zone by this team, and they had already shot down our evac, so we have to push forward. You see the life line was up on that rock wall. I got a decent spray on her and I cracked her. So I used that drop down. You see how I cut into the right, making this angle that she had not work anymore. If she wants to repeat it, caustic throws his ult at me, but he misses. And obviously I'm a caustic, but I see the ballistic ult. Saw that it was close. I back up. I preemptively throw the heat shield down because I know that the zone will overlap us at this point. I set off one of the traps. Ballistic drops all the way down into the trap, into my spray, down him. I'm pretty healthy. I throw another heat shield forward so that I put it on my other teammate speeds. I know I have a gold knockdown from the Newcastle back there. I push up. Speeds had already downed one because of the ring and because of some gunfire. And now it's just 1v1. The lifeline's playing over by the downed enemy, but she doesn't play it super well. I thirst that guy and I crack her. Then I get speeds behind this piece of cover and I res. I tell him, just Q at her and I'll push. And this way, she has no chance. And so I slide out and I try to spray and he cues at her and it's just too much for her to handle. And we wrap it up. 
up. So you'll see here that we used a lot of abilities. We used some survival items and ultimately our gunfire as well. But this team had all of the advantages in the world. They had positioning, they had space, they had timing, and they botched it completely. You have to know in these moments how much space you need to take and you have to know how to take it as well. And I think this was a good example of just hedging our bets by throwing the heat shields down, getting some gas traps out, activating them, forcing the fight a little bit in zone because that ends up backfiring for them because it doesn't favor them at all. They end up losing that. And then by the time Lifeline does get to the circle, we are already in pretty good shape and there's not that much more space to cover for us to get into the circle. And then we just outnumber her. But certainly having the gold knockdown here was very clutch. All right, now onto a Bangalore clip. This was a 50-50 at Carrier. We landed at the front. This team landed in the back. I got some faint audio sounds that they were still hanging back here. Now you'll see this Revenant pushes up and I try to remain patient because I could hear these players in the back and I didn't want them to wait for me to push out and I knew I was up ahead of my teammates. So once Revenant pushes out, I get a good spray, but I take no damage. You'll see how I smoke this ship and then I move to a different angle. I want to create some confusion here and ultimately I know if I smoke here, I might screw up the teammates who are hanging in the back, but I can catch the Revenant by attacking closer and faster. You see, I down him, then I instantly reposition, go back through the doors, wait for some of this commotion to unfold and have my teammates come in a little bit, immediately pop a cell, and then I get a nice beam through this, two down. I can see that the third player, because he shot me from the stairs, he missed. So then I get to the carrier ship and I just start thirsting the Revenant. I do this because I know it'll force this other player out of his positioning. And look what we have here. Boom, Loba, she's in line of sight of all three of us and it's GG's. The smoke here was 100% used so that it would block off the other two teammates hanging in the back and create some confusion around what's happening. Now, I didn't completely smoke them off so that they couldn't see, but it was enough to put something between Revenant and them. And that's what ended up favoring me here. Now, in this next clip on Bangalore, this is a 2v3. I just heard a respawn ship over here. My teammate is a little bit behind me and I'm taking that into account as I'm pushing up. I thought I only saw one player drop from the ship and it looks like this lifeline. She was caught slacking here a bit. She's on white armor. I push up. She elects to re-challenge, which was silly. I immediately use some cover and start to heal. But then I get an audio cue that they're pushing up. Then there's also a conduit ultimate. It's a little bit of chaos. So I smoke. I back up. I don't like that conduit ult. There's too much to shoot and not enough space for me to deal with it. So my teammate ended up pushing up. He gets downed. He downs the conduit, luckily though. And then Horizon queues up and I crack her. So I destroyed this little section of it. And then I go for the res. She's playing way back and I can hear that she has a 30-30. So she's looking for more of a long range engagement and I'm looking for more of a close range. I get the res off. I'm expecting a Horizon ult. Here it comes. One clip it. At this time, I'm just waiting for my teammate to reset, putting some pressure down. I smoke her. He throws a pad. And then this is just an awesome clip here. Smoke really screws her up, as you can imagine why. She can't see very well. She doesn't understand exactly how many players are coming at her or where they're exactly at. And then I just use that to my advantage because I remember exactly where she is at and I get a decent spray in the air at her. I think this fight is a great example of the subtleties of dancing in and out of a fight, getting some damage, backing up, adjusting to what's happening to me in live time, a conduit ult, my teammate pushing up, luckily he takes one down, right? But this this team was pushing up pretty aggressively after I downed the lifeline and I didn't really like what was happening. So I back out, come back in, and then we handle business. But it really comes down to teamwork, ability usage, and just understanding when to strike. I didn't get antsy and try to push out of my cover while the horizon's ADSing me with a 30-30. I played patient, used the res, which is my leverage here, tried to thirst her teammate, see if that would make her come off of high ground. She elected to stay, so I just smoked it, teammate padded, and boom, GG's. All right, moving on later in this game, there is a team at Promenade who was shooting us, but quickly they start getting third partied. So I used my Bangalore ult here because I thought they might push out onto that platform. As you can see, that Revenant is running low ground here. My Bangalore ult ended up doing nothing here. It wasn't the best use of an ability, but that's kind of hindsight because I wasn't sure exactly where everyone was at. We try to take the zip and I obviously get fried, so I drop down. I throw an arc in case they want to chase. I pop my bat. My teammate's holding for me. Then I'm going to pop a med kit. We're just going to back up. We thought about going up around, hitting up the other side. We can hear the audio above us. That sounds like they're just kind of mirroring us. They think we're going that way. So it's not looking too good at this point. You never want to be stuck low ground here. As we turn this corner, we see two people ratting here in pubs. Not sure why or what they're thinking, but we kill them pretty quickly. And now we're ready because the other team is thinking we're fighting. So they're going to drop. Crack the Mirage. And then we get shot at from the left. So that's where I smoke. 
I get a 64 spray, which is pretty good, but I knew my teammate was in rough shape, so I'm trying to buy some time here. My arc bounces off his back. There's a bunch of frags coming in from both sides. I'm able to 1v1 the Maggie, and then the guy peeks through the smoke. My teammate takes care of that octane, and now it's just last one, and we call that out to each other. So my teammate medkits, and then I don't really shield here. I don't have bats, so I'm just kind of being aggressive. I know my teammate's right there for backup, and I trust him. If I was solo queuing, I definitely would have healed because, uh, yeah, you know how randoms can be. But when you're playing with teammates, you trust you can do things together like this smoking here was clutch you know at the beginning of the fight where we got beamed off the zip line that would create an element of surprise if these players wanted to drop and chase us you know it may cause some confusion as well but then as the fight progresses and we kill that duo and the third party tries to approach smoking off that octane was huge because it allowed for the maggie to push me while i couldn't get shot by the octane of course i did get some damage off so the octane may have just elected to heal maybe not and then the mirage was playing a little too far back in order to get involved in this fight. He did try throwing some frag grenades, but ultimately smoking off that player so they're not able to abuse their off angle and get involved in the fight, even when they're not necessarily close, is what Bangalore is so freaking good at. I mean, of course, her smokes are very multifaceted. They can come in handy in so many different scenarios, and that's a huge reason why she's so meta still. But that's one aspect that I really like to use her smokes in. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll absolutely love this other video I made about GameSense, you can check it out right here. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.